This stretch of stream is considered to be the most dense breeding population of harlequins in the lower 48. 25% of the chicks that come from Montana are produced from this 10 mile stretch of creek. So it's a fairly important stream for productivity of harlequins. These little tiny guys are unique that they're the only waterfowl species to have a east-west migration rather than a north-south migration. They're such a bright, colorful, charismatic wildlife species that a lot of people come to the park to see. Since the early 90s, the park has been consistently surveying a 10-mile stretch of Upper McDonald Creek to get estimates of pairs and chicks. They do six surveys in the spring uh, when the pairs arrive, and then six surveys at the end of the summer when broods are on the stream. They are considered a species of concern here in Montana for a number of reasons. They're a long-lived duck, but they are slow to mature. Um, the females only return to their natal streams. That means the streams where they were born to breed. So if for some reason we lose a population of ducks on a stream anywhere in the world, it's highly unlikely that that would ever be repopulated. We've seen that happen on streams in Colorado and Idaho and some here in Montana. The other thing that's intriguing about harlequins is unlike other waterfowl species, once they mate and the females start incubating, the males migrate back to the coast. If the female lays her first clutch and loses it to predation or bad weather or something, they don't get a second chance. There are a lot of things working against them. With the, just the changing climate, we are seeing these wild fluctuations in weather patterns. Their nests are often flooded out. And with less predictable spring runoff, they're more vulnerable. We think climate change uh, may be a really important factor because stream flow is so dependent on the climate, whether it's the snowpack or the temperature that's influencing how quick that snowpack is happening. You know, it's a relatively intact and pristine watershed that does see you know, nearly two million people a year um, coming through. So we're trying to understand, are there impacts that um, visitors to the park might inadvertently have on the breeding population of harlequins? success. It's a, a really good metric looking at um, stress hormone levels for you know, how the environment is being reflected in the bird. We were wondering what are the factors influencing um, chick production and survival. And we had no idea mainly because we couldn't find any of their nests. In 19 years of surveys, we had only found one nest and that was totally accidental when somebody almost stepped on it. Um, now that we've had radios out, and we're, we still sometimes struggle finding their nests, but we've learned so much more about where they nest and it's totally understandable that we never did find them. They're just in such remote areas and areas that we would never have thought to have looked previously.
It's rare that you get to work with a group of people on a project long term that it feels like they've become family to you on this project that has happened. They have been big motivators to me now to, to do the best that I can, you know. Every moment that I get tired trying to understand and make sense of this puzzle that I think about all those volunteers and how much work they put into it and how much it means to them and you know not just the volunteers but all the people that we saw on the road. We came here to see Harlequin Ducks. We heard this was a good place to see it. Even though we have a lot of visitors here, I'm hoping that the fact that as soon as you get away from the road that there's enough habit, good habitat here that we still can protect the, the prime habitat for this species of concern here in Montana.